And we're back with some more Dyson Sphere program. And today we're going to get this damn wall finished. It's been taking too long as it is. Uh, in the background, I did a little bit of prep work. I basically knocked out graphene. To make graphene, we have fire ice coming in here from a nearby gas giant. That fire ice comes down here and gets split up into graphene and hydrogen. We'll have to find a use for the hydrogen in a bit. For, for now, that at least gets us started. Over here, we've got some gears going on and we are going to stick some uh, motors right beside that. What do you call them? Ah, yes, the electric motors. We're going to stick electric motors in here as well. Electric motors, check. Okay, that knocks another one off the list. What have we got left? Oh, we're going to have to do some electromagnetic turbines as well. God. One moment. One very quick electromagnetic turbine build later, and we have this, which seems to work. Wait, what are you short? Electronic motors. Uh, what happens here is all the motors from over here get sent all the way down the line and get past these machines where they should get picked up. Though we seem to be missing a few. Oh, what are we short? God damn it. No. Oh, iron plate. We can't actually bring in the iron plate fast enough. Uh, okay. In all fairness, we're going to scale that up later once we've got the, a few more things knocked out. But I think next up on the list will be super magnetic rings. Yeah, that should be fairly straightforward. I was a little bit naughty with this one. I didn't quite line up right with these, so I just chucked in another tower over here. Not the neatest thing I've ever done, but we're trying to avoid pa passing this line. If you pass that line, there's a chance the transport belts go all the wonky. Yeah, it just gets all weird, especially when you put buildings across it. So we're trying to keep this within... What would you call these things? Uh, one, two, like... Yeah, I think this is like five tiles wide or something along those lines. So we need to keep it inside that. Seems to be working though, and we've got uh, those uh, motors on the... Well, super magnetic rings are now in production. I want to get these started now because we're going to need those to put together the antimatter fuel rods, uh, but more importantly, the warpers. We're going to need the warpers as well because the warpers allow us to grab resources from other planets. Currently, the only way we can get those is by baking strange matter. The strange matter requires, where is it? These particle containers, which also requires the electromagnetic turbines. We don't actually need the blue motors for anything, but oh, that was it. Transport belts. Yep, transport belt requires those. Actually, how much transport do we... Ah, we've got plenty left. All right, let's figure out what we're going to do next. You know, I think we'll knock out warpers now. We need warpers to bring in fire ice, so... Yeah, let's use... Uh, well, we're going to gravitational lenses. To create diamonds. We can knock out diamonds in two seconds. Let's go down to our graphite production. As you can see, we have a, a nice little graphite production facility already up and running. We're grabbing all of our coal from one of the local planets, though. Uh, in system. So it's pretty handy to get in lots of it. We have so much resources in the system, we're never going to... Well, it's not that we'll never run out. It's just highly unlikely we're going to run out anytime soon. All right, diamond. Uh, let's lay this sucker right. Should be should be simple. There's sort of this weird point you hit when the oh, efficiency versus how long it takes you to build it. For example, these uh, diamonds here, they require two seconds. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, but it takes two seconds per each one. So to eat a full belt, we need about 60 of these. However, or we could stick two of them opposite each other, feed them all along one middle belt and do all this. We could change things. But in this instance, it's just simpler to keep in the old design. Okay, it only eats half a belt or it only produces half a belt, but we don't really care because we can just throw down more. And the fact that this template is just easy to throw down makes it, well, all the simpler. Well, that's diamond sorted. Next step is going to require strange matter, which we don't have anything done with that. We're going to need a particle container. Eh, particle container should be fairly simple. Iron plate and deuterium. Eh, particle container, I think we'll start with that one. Particle containers, pretty handy to put together, especially when we've got so many of these towers. Actually, how much, how's our inventory looking? Not terrible. We might have to do another run back home. I really hope we don't have to, but we might. Uh, at this point, okay, we've got particle containers coming in. How's their power looking? Ow. Yeah, yeah, well, that's still charging, I suppose. Okay, okay, I think we're pretty good. Our uh, our power ring up here of oil burners is looking pretty awesome, though. It's, oh my god, are we running out of oil? I think we actually don't have enough oil to keep this whole thing fed. That's kind of impressive. Oh, wait, no. No, I think everything's still going. Yeah, yeah everything's fueled. That is generating us a quite a chunk of power, though. Okay, right. with that done, what's left? Well, if we want to get warpers knocked out, let's say we still need strange matter. All right, so for strange matter, we're going to need deuterium. Deuterium? Deuterium? Whatever. I'm going to call it deuterium. Uh, to do that, we're going to have to take the hydrogen we've got and dump it somewhere. Hmm. All right, so the deuterium took a little bit of thinking. Uh, the reason for that was there's there's more than one way to get deuterium. Uh, for example, we'll just grab this here, go get these. Yeah, there's a... Oh, geez, there's several ways to get uh, deuterium. Well, we need the hydrogen first, but the hydrogen to get the deuterium, to make that deuterium, you have either the option of putting it through fractionators, which produce a small amount, but they take twice as much power. 
However, you can also do it through the uh, miniature particle colliders. That, however, requires twice as much hydrogen to get the same amount of deuterium. So if you use twice as much power to get the use twice as much power to get the same amount of deuterium, or you use twice as much hydrogen, one or the other, you got to take your pick. Personally, I think I'm just going to go with these. They're very easy and they require less space, namely because I'm trying to keep everything in the top part of this globe, just so that we leave everything down below free for mining. I know that's not uh, perfect, but it's just the way we're going for now. Anyway, let's just turn this sucker on. So they, I think they eat five hydrogen at a time, and they, or ten hydrogen at a time, and they spit out ten deuterium on the other side. Now I've left room here to stick in a second one, just so that we can have a full belt if we need it. And done. I kind of like the way that up at the top of the map you can sort of see all your production so close together. It sort of circles it around on itself, especially that power, that power ring. Just I love that. All right, next up, let's see what we got to do. Oh my god, this is just warpers. This game is mental. All right, so we've got, oh, yes, yeah, so we got particle containers, we got deuterium, then all we need is strange matter. Strange matter should not be that hard. We've got all our ingredients. Let's just chuck down another tower, say, oh, over here somewhere, should be fine. And then we can just squeeze them in this side. And particle containers are done. I did have to pause and go back to our home base to grab some of these uh, particle colliders. I didn't have any of them here, and I had no way of making them. And I think our power grid is redlining. Oh yes, our power grid is definitely redlining. Oh god damn it. Uh, we could go get more. You know what? I think I'm just going to put down a big chunk of solar just to tide us over. It's pretty handy to do with the build tools we have. Though I might want to actually make... Oh, damn it, I've just been back home already. I'm not going back again. I'm going to build solar here and I'm going to use that solar to uh, improve our power situation. I really should have stayed more on top of power, but I think it's just the mall kind of got out of hand. It was only supposed to be a little mall and then... Yeah, it just kind of grew a little bit further than I was anticipating. I will throw down a chunk of solar just to tide us over, though. It, it won't take too long. A few extra layers of solar panels in our power belt. That's four extra layers. That gives us lots of power. We're finally hitting satisfaction level. We really have to start building a Dyson sphere soon, though. Just, just to get the power for this section. But I think that should tide us over until we catch up on some of this backlog. Actually, no, i got to put down some extra iron. Then that'll tide us over. With all the iron in place, the next step we're looking for would be... Oh, we're going to need to build quantum chips. Uh, quantum chips require processors. Processors require microcrystalline components. Now, when playing around with these, these require, oh, was it 10? Well, these require 20 facilities to make, as in 20 of these suckers in here. Where is it? Yeah, these. So we have to place down 20 of these. However, we can be comparing that with some of the other things you make, like green circuits and gears. They only require 10. So I think I'm going to make this a bit of a smaller section to see if we can build them in down here and make them sort of similar to the ones up there. Yeah, this is one of the failed experiments. I was trying to see if we could squeeze in four of these through here, especially with two ingredients going in one out. There's just not enough room. Uh, we're going to have to chop this down to three per tower. This here is a very quick blue circuit build. But there's one thing I want to show. I picked up a mod. It was suggested in the comments. Thanks very much for that, because I've just sort of started playing around with it and figured out that, yes, it is extremely good. You press this button here with the mod and you sort of drag it through here. I'll link it in the description. And we are going to copy all of that like the whole chunk of it, every single last bit of it. And then we're going to paste it. Yep, the copy and paste functionality is there. And does it work? That looks like it's working. Oh god, that is so handy. That's going to be so handy for making furnace columns. And done. I'll have to put in some power on the other side, but that's okay. It does mean we're going to have to start planning our designs a little bit better to make that just easier to use, but that was so handy. Connecting up the lines, and there we go. That'll give us one full belt of blue circuits, or whatever, microcrystalline components. What's next up? Dear Lord. Um, okay, we need uh, processors. Okay, processors shouldn't be an issue. We've got those two ingredients on the buses already. Say hello to the processor build. That should be just about perfect. There we go. And done on that front. And what have we got left? Dear Lord. And this is just to do warpers. I swear to God, this is just to do warpers. We want it to be 100%. Well, we've already got those. That means we need plane filters. Plane filters are... Oh, come on. Seriously, game? You're just messing with me now. Right. We will start with whatever this is. What is this? Actually, you know what? No. We'll do this titanium glass first. Titanium glass sounds like a lot simpler. Right, all we need for that is glass. We got that already. Titanium, we got that already. Water, okay, we can ship that in. Just those three together and we can ch chuck ourselves out some titanium glass. Right, give me, give me five. Titanium glass was not 
that hard, but it did take me an awful lot of time to get this working. Uh, the reason for it was, well, um, we had to go get water. So water required us to go to another planet. This is not a water planet. This is volcanic ash. So we had to go all the way over here to one of those, uh, to our green planet. We've got, uh, where are you? Ah, the forge system. And while we were at forge system, we also went ahead and grabbed ourselves the organic crystal because we're going to need that for the next stage. Next stage is... Oh my god, and this, seriously, this is just to get warpers. Uh, oh, sorry, wrong one. Next one is we're going to need to get our hands on plane filters. So plane filters require... We've already got the titanium glass. We just need casimir crystals. Casimir? Casim? Oh, whatever. Which requires titanium crystals. We've got... We've already got hydrogen, we've already got graphene, we just need the titanium crystals, which require the organic stuff, which we just got. So we just need a bunch of organic crystals. We're also going to stick them down here in our sort of smelting type area because, right, let me show you this here. This here is sort of uh, one of the bills we're going to be using from now on. It's four lines with one of these in the middle. Uh, actually, let me demonstrate it simpler. What we're trying to do here is fit these exactly the same distance apart. These two are as close as you can possibly get them to each other. And that gives us this amount of space to work with, basically from this tower here to this tower here. And that allows us to squeeze in exactly three assembly machines with three inputs and one output. So we can basically fill this up with titanium glass. And over here, we can do something similar where we can fit in uh, three inputs, three outputs, and it will fit in just perfectly. In fact, we could take all three of these rows here and stick three assembly machines in front of all of them and give them three inputs and three outputs. And with three inputs and three outputs, they will fit exactly into this, which has 12 input output ports. So yeah, that seems like a very convenient way of doing things. Of course, just let me clean this up. We're not going to be putting it in here because there's a mining facility in the way, but it does give us a nice organized way to place things down. So the whole point of explaining that was we can take this build and we can convert it down or something similar. For example, where is this? Titanium crystals. They require only two inputs and have one output. So we can grab one of these ones that we did already, say the processors. They have two inputs and one outputs. And we can go grab the blueprint tool. You can use the plus or minus symbols on the keypad to make this bigger or smaller. So we'll grab that there. And we can just run this all the way down here. Make sure we grab everything, including the power poles. Oh, God, I love the way that you can include the power poles. And done. Then we can move this all the way over here. Now, I think it might keep the... Uh, oh, they watch my calls them. Oh, one second. Just there. Yeah, it's going to keep the the record of what was actually queued to be built. But you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. Come on. Oh my god, that is crazy. In fact, let's use the time mod as well. And yeah, we can definitely save ourselves a whole bunch of effort. All right. Now we just got to change uh, what's queued up. So for all that we do there is we just change that to titanium crystals. And we just copy paste that along. This will take me a minute. There flows our titanium crystals. And then... The last one, I think it's just these cashmere crystals. That's fine. Three inputs, one output. And we did have this up here, which is basically the, that. Three inputs, one output. All we have to do is grab the blueprint brook and let's take ourselves a little blueprint to the sucker. We have moved all the way down here because we've got lots of space down here. And that should allow us to tack this in quite nicely. The game doesn't lag, actually. I was expecting the game to lag when I had the blueprint in my uh, hand and was moving about. Ooh, we'll put you right about there. And then what we'll have to do is we'll bring one input down there and another input from down there. Same again on this side. Oh, and you can go up there and in. Dear Lord, that is so much simpler. Now we do have to change, of course, what's queued up to be built, but this saves you so much time. Imagine how quickly, you, once we've got a Dyson Strip for power and we've got our mole finished, we can just churn stuff out. Expanding will be so much handier. Unfortunately, I'd made this a little bit too long. Um, this thing eats so much hydrogen, we can only make about seven of them in a row. And even then, it's actually not quite enough. This one will actually stall out occasionally just because there's not enough hydrogen coming in. We're going to have to uh, add in a few more just to meet production demand. With all of these going flat out, we have a, a little bit of a problem. I don't think the hydrogen can get here fast enough. It, it keeps bottoming out. I've put it down to local demand as well and set up a, another... There's another station over there that actually collects hydrogen from the remote locations. We have a couple of local gas giants we're tapping into. That should hopefully work out, or the local gas giant should be able to keep us going, well, hopefully for a while, at least until the, the cashmere crystals back up. Then that just leaves us. Come on, what's left? What's left? We must have a lot of it. Okay, now we just need quantum chips, which, oh no, we need plane filters. Damn it. Okay, so we need plane filters, which, how many are we going to need for this? 
Oh, wow, we are going to need a lot of plane filters. 12 seconds? 12? That's... No, that, that's going to... Oh, yeah, let me think. I don't know if I mentioned how incredibly handy this is, but dear Lord, being able to just lay, play them out like that, this just saves so much time. <laughs> Once you've got the design down. I mean, okay, coming up with the design is the fun part, but then it's a case of scaling up, and that's sort of also incredibly good, and that is just... Look at that. Perfection. There we go. Plane filter production completed. Now all we need to do is actually build the quantum chips. Dear Lord Jesus. Still just going for warpers. That's all we're going for. This game is mental. All right. Uh, for this, we only need two in, one out. Pretty simple. We'll just... Uh, actually, we'll just stick it in here. I mean, we've already got the plane filters there, so we do one in, one out. Yeah, five seconds. I love that we were able to throw this together so quickly. That's just... Ugh. Oh, uh, this mod, I should probably warn you, has uh, a few... It doesn't work with a few other common mods, like uh, the the advanced construct-deconstruct one. Yeah, it doesn't work with that one, so you have to uninstall that. Actually, there's a couple of mods it doesn't work with. Definitely read the instructions on the mod before you use it. There's two mods it doesn't work with, uh, so if it's not working, double-check instructions. All right, with that done, we can finally get around to making warpers. This is Jesus Christ. Or wait, no, we have to make gravitational lenses. God damn. Okay, gravitational lenses, then we're making warpers. Gravitational lenses are two in, one out as well. So, yeah, we're just going to do it the same way again. Oh my god. Yeah, sorry, I know I'm, I'm gushing too much about this blueprint tool, but it just makes life so much better. Anyway, with that done, let's plug it in. Oh, change the... We, all we have to do is change what's queued up here, make that gravitational lenses. Then I have to copy paste it. So this is probably the most annoying part is copy pasting it because you have to sort of run sideways while doing this. <laughs> and of course you mess it up. I find it's better just to take my hands off the mouse and do it with the control keys. And uh, let me plug this in one second. And there it goes. Gravitational lenses. We're almost finished. Now I should point out there's no way we can keep up with this. We've only got about half the production necessary to keep up with this many. But this does eat an entire line of one thing, so we sort of want to build it this long. We'll grow into it as we go, and we'll be adding in more production as we scale, as we scale up, so why not just build it now? Do we have the power for it? Yeah, we do, just about. That means we can now build warpers. Oh, I just realised to build this gravitational machine, we need to build science labs. I didn't bring any with me. I'm going to have to go around and manually craft a bunch of science labs. Um, oops. <laughs> I'm not going back for these. I can find the raw materials here. It's five seconds to put together some science labs. I will be the first to admit, this is complete overkill when it comes to making warpers. We, we do not need this much, but we are going to need to put in some science at some point, and having this here producing science, it, it won't hurt. And this many warpers? Well, it does definitely mean that we're not going to get stranded out here. That's one of the things that worried me was getting stranded, though. I suppose at this point we have so much infrastructure here, it's actually better here than back home. Well, except for power. Power-wise, yeah, we really need to get into a Dyson. There's just one more thing we've got to do. We've got to actually put together them all. We never did that yet. But we've got just about everything. I mean, we have all the necessary components to build that. That, oh, particle broadband is missing from that, but we can build pretty much everything listed here. Ooh, mm, pretty much. Some of the higher end stuff is going to require a little bit of work, but we're pretty damn close to everything. And this is the start of our mall. I went with, well, basically I repurposed the old mall we were using, which was green, no, green circuits, electromagnets, um, iron plate, and stone. But then I also added in glass. Um, having a little bit more of a think about it, glass seemed like the logical choice when it came to adding to the bus, because it actually gives us a lot of versatility. Uh, the best example of that is this thing here. We need to make uh, these wireless power towers. We don't need a lot of them, but it's nice to have them. However, they require plasma exciters. So all we've done here is we've actually taken the glass and we turned that into prisms. Then we take those prisms and we combine them with the electromagnets we already have on the bus and that gives us the plasma exciters. And then the plasma exciters we feed into this assembly machine and then it's right beside the Tesla, Tesla tower so the Tesla tower feeds in from the opposite side. Meaning we get to produce these without having to do some complicated shenaniganry to make plasma exciters. It all just flows in there. And that's just using five lines, which is perfectly easy. In fact, I'm going to start using this design in my early builds as well. Putting glass on the bus just makes things simpler. And as well as that, for, like normally you'd put gears on the bus instead of glass, but we can just make gears with the iron plate that's on there already. And it's a level three belt, so we should be fine. Sorry about the messer. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to squeeze these towers around here. They're going to act as sort of the 
the storage points because we can access them from anywhere on the planet. You, know, you can click on any tower anywhere and then you can pull resources out of it if you want to. So this should give us a nice healthy mall. And all I gotta do is put in a whole bunch more. This, this could take a little time, one moment. All right, just to show you what we're sort of doing here in a slightly more convoluted sense. Uh, this entire thing here is just designed to make these belts, the layer two conveyor belts. Uh, what we have here is just the layer one conveyor belts and they need gears. So we pull iron plate, turn it into, a, put it into a gear machine, gear machine feeds into that and boom, we've got the level one belts. But to make the level two belts, we need electromagnetic turbines. Now I know we have these on the bus, but instead what we do is we build gears on site, we feed them into this machine, which makes electromagnetic motors, which then feeds into this machine, which makes electromagnetic turbines, which then feeds into this machine to give us the level two belts. And then, of course, we don't want those level two belts on our bus. That would be pointless. We, we don't want them put into one of our towers. That would be a waste of space. So what instead we're going to do is we're just going to stick one of these towers here, set this to layer three conveyor belts, and then it's only missing two items now. It's going to get the layer two belts, but it needs super magnetic rings and graphene. Or, yeah, and those two we've got on our bus. So we just call them in. That's simply it. We'll call in graphene and we'll call in the electromagnets, electromagnetic turbines, and we'll just reduce the those quite a bit. Lo local demand, thank you very much. Oh, actually give that some ships first. And local demand, I think we're out of a lot of things. Reddit towers, Reddit, oh, never mind. We'll worry about that in a minute. And there we go. Then all we do is we feed those out. This doesn't even have to be that complicated, to be honest. Oh. That's a little bit too far. Graphene and electric motors come in here. They feed into this and then we just chuck that across and boom. Now we're producing level three conveyor belt on site, which is nice because we were running a little bit lower than I would have liked. This was actually the last bit we had. So done. And that's pretty much how we're going to continue along. Just doing weird convoluted combos like that and then dumping them into the towers. And then we're going to keep extending this around and around and around. Though that could get in the way. Hmm. Not going to worry about that for now. Let me let me put down a few more. I may have invested some more time in here on the side. We've uh, got a whole bunch of junk being produced here. We got your your regular splitters. We've got your sorters. We've got mines, water smelters, and matrix labs. Well, water no, water pumps. Well, they pump sulfur as well. So I don't know if they should really be called water pumps. Liquid pumps. Liquid pumps. Yeah. Anyway, I was uh, continuing on. I did have to make a trip back home though. The problem was we'd sort of run out of logistic towers. However, uh, where is it? Yeah, there. we've now got a bunch of logistic towers. I even picked up a few extra odds and sods. We probably shouldn't need to go back again, though I've said that before. Now all we need to do is finish this off. However, the uh, uh, an update hit, and I did a restart, and now none of my mods, well, my mods start, well, one of my mods is causing an issue, which is annoying. Um, I don't know if it's multi-build by broken mass, so you might want to check that yourself, but I think I'm going to cut this out here because I, 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 like, I like having those mods. They make it really handy. Plus, the light mod makes it much easier to see what's going on. Well, especially when you're trying to record this stuff. Anyway, I think I think we're close to getting this finished. I'm going to knock out the last of this mall. I'll go through it at the, the start of the next episode, what I actually go through. I think I, what we do, I think we'll probably have to cover over some of these resources. But honestly, we can pump resources so fast with just a few mines already. I, I don't think it really matters. Oh, research is stalled out. Nope, nope, never mind. Stop getting distracted. All right, I'm going to... Our next plan will actually be to put down a Dyson Sphere around this, this sun. We want a Dyson Sphere because it will give us all the power we need. How big can we make it? Yeah, we'll make a max size Dyson Sphere and we'll slowly grind something out. It should hopefully be reasonably interesting. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed and good luck. Thank you.